Welcome back, everyone. The following segment is sponsored by Car and Car. Well, have you ever been worried about sharing the highway with semi-trucks? It's not hard to be intimidated by their size and the nagging thought that their drivers might need some sleep. Well, the experts at Car and Car, they want you to be informed. So this morning, we welcome via Skype attorney Michael Carr. Michael, good to talk to you this morning. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Um, I know this is something that worries me as a driver on the highway. You kind of see semis swerving back and forth sometimes. You wonder, did they get enough sleep? Is there another issue that's going on in that cab? They are big, intimidating uh, pieces of equipment, no doubt about it. So I want to talk a little bit about how these semi-truck wrecks differ from just a normal car accident. Sure. Well, uh, obviously, one of the biggest differences between a semi truck and a, just a regular passenger vehicle is the size. A regular car weighs around uh, 4,000 pounds. Semi truck is 80,000 plus pounds. So it's just the force that you would have if you're in a crash with a semi is dramatically different than what you would have if you're in a crash with a regular vehicle. And the greater intensity of the crash certainly raises the likelihood of uh, you having a serious injury from it. Yeah, and we see the pictures that you're showing here. Those trucks virtually have almost no damage, whereas these uh, normal passenger vehicles, they are almost crushed a bit. So big, big differences there in those crashes. Um, I do want to talk also, and I I'm wondering myself, what are some of the reasons? You know, we touched on sleep a little bit, but there are obviously reasons that are going to run the gamut of why semi-truck drivers could be getting in accidents. Go over some of those with our viewers. Sure. Well, um, if you're a semi-truck driver or or if you're trying to drive uh, a commercial vehicle, you have to pass certain tests. So you have to pass uh, a medical background screening. You have to pass a drug and alcohol test. You have to pass, uh, you're supposed to be able to pass certain training uh, tests that you're given. And so typically when there's a, a crash with a semi-truck, um, the root cause of the crash can be things like the truck company pushing its driver to drive too much. Uh, under law, a truck driver is capped at the amount of hours it can drive in a 24-hour period. But sometimes uh, certain truck companies can push the drivers to kind of ignore those requirements and go beyond them. Or the truck company may hire a, a driver that's just not qualified because the driver has some sort of a medical condition that really makes it difficult for the driver to drive long distances or that drivers on certain types of uh, sleep medication. I've seen that before. Mm -hmm. um, or even, you know, the driver's just not properly trained on how to drive in certain kinds of weather. So those can often be the root causes of a, of a crash with a semi-truck. Now, given that, uh, many times when there's a semi-truck crash with a regular passenger vehicle, it's not the semi-truck driver's fault. Semi-truck driver can do everything correct. But sometimes, it, sometimes it is a semi-truck driver's fault, for sure. Well, if someone is hurt by a semi-truck, then who can be held responsible for that? Well, it's both the semi-truck driver and the semi-truck uh, company. You know, obviously, if a semi-truck driver did something wrong on the road and caused a crash, the semi-truck driver can be responsible for the, for its his own his or her own negligence. But it's also the truck company is responsible for its driver's own negligence. And beyond that, the truck company can be held responsible for you know, pushing that driver to, to go too far uh, or pushing that driver to go too fast or hiring a driver that's just not qualified and should not be on the road. So you can have both the truck driver be held responsible and his employer. Well, Michael, it sounds like there are a lot of questions kind of evolving stuff like this. So if folks have those kinds of questions, how do they get a hold of you guys? Yes, get a hold of us and we can help explain, you know, what your rights are and what you may be uh, entitled to in terms of compensation. And uh, it's a free consultation. Wonderful. Well, we'll get that information up on the screen so folks know how to get a hold of you. Michael, good to talk to you today. All right. Thank you so much. Again, Car and Car, attorneys at law. Uh, they have anybody uh, waiting there, ready to answer the phones. Answer your questions if you have any. Give them a call. 918 747-1000 or visit their website. See if they can help you out. Carandcar.com.